the industry seems to be underinvesting in memory relative to how we see the importance. We don't have the resources of a Google or an OpenAI when we can just explore all this stuff at once. And these may be the wrong investments. We really need to pick our battles and our approaches. The other morning, I was starting my daily routine and I had a realization. There's this elephant in the room that nobody building in AI is really addressed. Every day a sexy new product launches that promises a riff on the same vision, an AI tool that will help you get things done. And that's really exciting to see. But it's becoming clearer and clearer that the thing that will ultimately make or break these companies, including the browser company, is something quite unsexy. It's reliability. <laughs> Let's do it again. Okay, sorry, I laughed. We believe that the key to unlocking reliability relies on the implementation of two things. How we implement memory and how we build AI agents. And if we at the browser company can't nail this, we might not make it. <laughs> AI tools really need to be reliable if we're going to depend on them for our daily lives. Like, think about your kitchen, you know? Say you're straining pasta and one out of ten times the pasta just goes straight through. Or Imagine you're heating up your food and one out of 10 times, it actually gets colder rather than warmer. We wouldn't use these tools if that was the case. And yet that's the place where AI tools are at currently in the industry. Our vision at Browser Company is to build a browser that browses for you. To do that reliably, we really need to nail two pieces of infrastructure, a really comprehensive version of memory, some, some way that ARC can understand you better over time and get to build context about you so it can do tasks well. The other is building a really good AI agents mechanism so it can do all of the tasks in your life in a way that is really reliable and 10 out of 10 times it does what you want it to do. It's on us and the industry at large to figure out ways to make these systems much more reliable so we can rely on them just like we rely on tools in our kitchen. Okay, memory. <laughs> I think a great analogy is imagine you walked into work every day and all of your coworkers had never seen you before. Be absurd. You know, every morning you would start from scratch and it would be like Groundhog Day. It makes no sense. This is not just anecdotal. There's a lot of research starting to ramp up about this stuff and we see as you add memory and context to LLMs, they become way more powerful and can have their own conclusions over time. The current approaches we're seeing to memory, not in academia, but in the products folks are releasing, are still very, very early stage. I think ChatGPT just introduced a memory mechanism where you can ask it to remember stuff, but it's still very small. You know, every time you go back to ChatGPT, it's a new conversation and it doesn't remember all of the hundreds of other conversations you've had with it. It's a little interesting to see the industry not go as hard on this as we'd imagine they would. And so, you know, we've been kind of nervous about this because are we thinking about this incorrectly? You know, are the folks who've really been working on this for decades, do they know something we don't? You know, there's a world where later this year, the context windows get so large that you can just dump raw data in there. And in that world, it doesn't actually matter the little optimizations you do around what context you give the AI for any particular task. The time we spend on reliability is zero sum. And so this is a real decision for us, is how do we spend our time, how do we allocate it, and where do we bring creativity uh, in a way that it'll be a, a lo long-lasting and durable um, investment for us. Okay, agents. An agent, if you think about it, is just an AI that is making decisions about how it's doing tasks. And so it gets some context about the world and decides from that context, what do I do next? What action do I take? The first fork in the road is, do we have a specialized model that is just built around agent stuff? Or do we just use the off the shelf big models from OpenAI, from Anthropic, from others? There are a bunch of companies building very specialized models for agent workflows. There's hundreds of millions of dollars going into this. We have a pretty strong take here, which the generalized models are probably the way to go. The more a generalized model, you know, learns how to generate images, ironically, it also gets better at text generation and making decisions about tasks and doing everything else. It's a really tough to keep catching up with those generalized models if you're building a very specific model for agents. The second fork in the road and real decision to make is how do these models actually learn how to do stuff? So there's a few approaches in the industry for this at the moment. The first is to actually teach the model how to do something. If it doesn't know how to do something or it hasn't seen it before, it'll actually ask you, hey, how would I do this task? And you can show it and narrate to it, hey, this is how I would do this and then it uses that in memory to then do the same task in the future. This is exciting as a way to bootstrap these kind of models to do stuff but as you can imagine it does get tedious over time. 
is gonna get sort of like problematic over time and it's just a lot of work and labor. Other options to build reliability, one that both DeepMind and OpenAI have spent a lot of time on, can the AIs just learn by doing? And if you think of AlphaGo, the way it got really good and much better than humans at doing tasks was just playing itself over and over. Games are a lot easier because there's a very solid win condition, you know? And so it'll be tricky if we wanna go this route to figure out how do we tell when it does, does a good job and how do we tell when it doesn't do a good job and how can it learn from that? Yeah, so which one are we gonna choose? Um, this doesn't seem like a solved problem yet. There, there's still so much to explore on other ways we can both build reliability with agents and teach them our preferred way of doing tasks. And so we're still exploring, are there other ways entirely outside of these two categories? Are there other ways we can build reliability over time that don't entail humans telling it what to do or it playing itself? We'll see. We're investing in memory and agents because we believe these are foundational building blocks to build the future and build this browser that knows you better over time and browses for you. Uh, but it's still nerve wracking. These may be the wrong investments. And there's a world in even in six months and eight months where all of this really focusing on how do we get reliability up just doesn't matter because the models get so much smarter, so much quicker, uh, and they intrinsically just know what to do. And then all this time we spent on reliability actually was irrelevant because uh, the models got better so quickly. So I think similar to memory, the rate of change is exponential. And so figuring out how we spend our limited resources is a really key part of making sure uh, you know, we make it. Vision for ARC has always been to take work off your plate. And so you know, as this technology improves, the building blocks are really moving out from underneath us. But what doesn't change is we always want to make it easier to use the internet generally. And so uh, that's an exciting part of our mission, which, is, which doesn't change.